All right. I know we're not in the habit of talking about happy stories on this segment, but I want to warn you up front that this week's stories are going to be particularly brutal. And I won't blame you at all if you want to just skip ahead a couple of minutes and miss out on the worst of it. And time to do that is running out fast because our first story is about a man decapitating his child. So this is the horrible and tragic story of Ramina Ashrafi, an Iranian teenager murdered by her father who will, at most, spend 10 years in prison for this heinous and premeditated crime. But her story doesn't start being horrible then by any means. The 14-year-old had drawn an online reputation for pushing back against religious strictures with incendiary shit like letting her hair show from behind her face veil and posting pictures of her online in jeans and a t-shirt. When her dad found out, in addition to all of that, she also had a boyfriend. He called a lawyer and asked what kind of punishment he'd get if he murdered her. And if that's not fucked up enough by itself, the lawyer then explained that because he was her father, he'd be looking at 10 years at most. Normally, murder comes with a death penalty in Iran. But under Sharia law, that doesn't count if your victim is your child or your grandchild. And you're a man. Let's be super clear. If the mom did it, she would be executed. Now, the crime did gain a lot of national attention, and even Iranian conservatives found it appalling, possibly at least partly because he committed the crime with a farming sickle. And while even religious conservatives have condemned the crime, they still defend the law that basically gave her dad permission to do it. And I'm sad to tell you that I can't guarantee you that that, that's the most fucked up story I've got this week. Because my next story is about a father in Egypt who tricked his daughters into FGM by telling them that they were getting vaccinated for the coronavirus. Now, to be clear, that's illegal in Egypt and has been for a depressingly brief 12 years. So the dad was arrested for this, but that's really only because their mom didn't go along with it. Despite the laws, some experts estimate that as many as half of Egyptian girls are still subjected to this kind of barbarity. And according to the BBC, so far not one single person has been successfully prosecuted under the law. Now, normally after subjecting you to two stories that bad, I try to offer up a little good news to ease you back into the headlines. But I'm afraid the best I can do for you this time around is some less gruesome bad news. It looks like an appeals court just tossed out the challenge Satanist issued against Missouri's bullshit abortion waiting period. The original suit argued that the restrictive law violates the satanic principle that one's body is inviolable and subject only to one's own will, which the law clearly does. So if we were all being subjected to the same rules, this would be a slam dunk win for abortion rights. Needless to say, it wasn't. So with the eternal but unwarranted optimism that maybe I'll have some good news to offer up next week, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath. 